advocates of mobility. The only problem is not a lot of people like to do it. It's boring, it's a little confusing. I mean, essentially you're learning a whole new style of working out before you even start your real workout. You have to put a lot of time into it, a lot of dedication. You have to learn you know, what specific movements are gonna work on what joints and mobilize them. And, uh, but you know, it really does pay off in the long run. And that's the hard thing is because it is gonna be an investment of your time, your effort, but as you progress, as either you lift a little bit more weight, as you gain, um, uh, you know, as your age goes up a little bit, you're gonna thank yourself for putting in that time in the beginning because not only you're gonna perform better, you're gonna feel better, and you're really gonna last longer, you know, in the long run. As you age, you're gonna feel better. Um, if you don't put in this work now, you're only maybe going to get more and more nagging injuries and they're only going to get worse as time progresses. So putting in the time to do your mobility, to learn about it, what specific movements that you should really concentrate on to maybe work on certain areas that, you know, are holding you back is going to go a long way. So as you can tell now, we're just doing some ankle mobility, um, a little bit of back, um, some upper body because today is push day. So we're going to be incorporating some squats and big compound movements like squats bench press, shoulder press, things of that nature. So we really wanna make sure all our joints are ready and mobile. If you're wondering if this looks a little bit like torture it is, it's what we have christened BDSM, Buff Dude Standard Mobility. We recommend it before every workout. <laughs> <laughs> or if you're kinky, maybe right before that. <laughs> Whatever the hell, you know. You just gotta have your safe word. Yes, fub! Okay, there we go. That was my muscle crying out. Very happy that we're finally getting that beard length. Not only is it adding to our overall weight, we feel a little bit more like buff dudes when we got this going on. And I'm also very sad to say, this is the last time you're gonna see us with these beards for a little while. We're both gonna be shaving for an upcoming video. And for those of you who know, you probably know exactly what that's for. So, look for it soon. <laughs> I like to always try to treat the warm-ups much like you would if you're doing really heavy weight. Make sure you're in the proper position, make sure you're bracing during the movement because the warm-up is not only warming up your muscles, it's also kind of warming up your mind too to make sure it's ready, it's kind of checking off all the stuff that you're needing to do, especially when you go really heavy, to make sure you avoid any kind of injury, um, make sure you avoid any you know, form breakage. So take the time to warm up, not only to get your heart rate up, to get the muscles activated, but to really get your, perfect your form, make sure everything is on point. So once you do go up in weight, you're feeling really solid, you know exactly what to do, it feels damn good. Whew. Whew. That's feeling pretty good. As you can see, we're not going extremely heavy. That's probably one question you might ask yourself. You guys are bulking, you guys wanna get bigger. Do you have to lift heavier weights? You know, I've seen guys lift 400, 500, 600 pounds on the squat. You're only doing 225. You know, we might go up a little bit, but you don't have to necessarily lift your one rep max, your two rep max, whatever it is, every single time. You know, you slowly work up to that. You can do that from time to time to see how much strength you gain over time. But just because you aren't lifting heavy every single day doesn't mean you're not gonna get stronger or bigger. You wanna track your weights. You wanna make sure you know the right amount of repetitions you're doing, the volume, the amount of sets, the frequency. There's a lot more that goes into it than just lifting heavy every day because no one can do that. It's gonna put too much wear and tear on your body. So make sure you're kind of going at a slower pace. Make sure you're doing that progressive overload, whether that be increasing the reps, increasing the weight, increasing the sets. You know, the complexity of your training, a lot goes into it. So yeah, keep that in mind whenever you wanna gain some strength or size. Don't immediately say, I'm gonna have to lift my max every day because you're never gonna make gains that way. Do it a little bit smarter. So as they say, train smarter, not harder. Oh shit. Anakin Skywalker mode active. <laughs> no, not Anakin. Now this is squatting. <laughs> Somewhere Jake Lloyd shed a tear. <laughs> Poor guy. <I> know. <laughs> uh, we love you, Jake Lloyd. <laughs> yeah. And the actor who played Jar Jar Binks. 
<laughs> no, we know. Well, okay. I mean, he's probably cool. He's though. actually probably cool. Yeah, it's, George, it's not his fault. <sighs> it's George Lucas's. That's <sighs> us feel nice. Nice and tight. Really contract everything, tighten everything up before you lift the weight off. Pulling the shoulders back, squeezing, placing your upper back against the bench, you know, jamming your feet into the floor, creating that nice tension in the legs and the hips, and then slowly lower it down, explosively lift it up. Incline, baby, in the upper chest. That's all I gotta say about that. <laughs> You'll get some people asking, like, what kind of programming should I do? Full body, push and pull, upper, lower or maybe a bodybuilding split, you know, a single or maybe only two muscle groups per day working out five days a week. With a push-pull like we're doing now, it's four days a week. Um, the differences between, let's say, a push and pull, a lower upper, full body and bodybuilding split, they all have their benefits, they all have their uses. We are big advocates of starting with a full body workout. Um, we really enjoy the five by five program, you know, because that really trains the bare essentials, the compound movements, the squats, bent over rows, bench press, those are exercises you always need to make sure you're including in any program, but those are the ones you really wanna perfect. Those are the ones you get the most bang for your buck, the most important before adding any kind of isolation movements in, but you can't do that forever. Obviously, with your body, it adapts to certain types of training. Um, with the five by five, you can do progressive overload in the sense of increasing your weight week after week, and that's really good. You need to focus on that for a while. You know, people work on micro, meso, and macro cycles. Micro being maybe like a week at a time. So you train a certain way for a week, a meso cycle, multiple weeks, and then a macro cycle could be months or even a year at a time. So you really wanna work out not only what your goals are, what you're training, uh, you're using your training for, but the full body is probably one that you always wanna begin with. Of course, naturally, as your body adapts to a certain type of training, you need to make it a little bit more complex. You need to add a little bit more different techniques in, and that's why a push-pull uh, program can come in handy. You're separating certain movements, you're kind of peppering it with certain isolations to bring certain muscle groups up. Then you can change it to a lower upper body split, again, to change the exercises, to change the sets and reps. But then, as you progress, if it's something you wanna do, you can start maybe a certain bodybuilding type of split. You can include maybe single or double muscle groups in one workout. You can increase the volume. Um, so there's a lot that goes into programming and training. You just have to make sure that you understand why you're doing it and what the benefits are. But the push and pull, we're gonna be doing this for a little bit. It feels great. It allows us to separate certain movements and muscle groups, but we're still getting a large workout in in one day. The frequency is higher because we're training certain muscle groups multiple times a week, but the volume is decreased slightly. So anyways, that's a lot. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit. And again, just start slow, start with the basics, and then slowly add on to that. So it's kind of like building a pyramid. Get the base, the foundation, then it goes all up to the peak, baby. And that makes a true buff dude, yeah. And every era and every personality usually gravitates towards a certain style of training. You'll have the golden era in the 70s, had a bodybuilding split set up. You had, of course, Mike Metzger switched up the game in the 80s. Dorian Yates had his particular style in the 90s. And now, of course, with the rise of social media, you have a lot of people claiming that their system shows the greatest benefits. And I'll tell you what the greatest workout is. It's the one you're doing consistently. Because if you're not doing anything, and if you get on any workout consistently, uh, five by five, upper, lower, push, pull, bodybuilding split, and you're consistent with it, you're also safe with it, that's gonna be the one that shows you benefits. You're gonna see your body change in a healthy way, and then once you feel that maybe you've come to the end, maybe you've hit a plateau, or maybe you just wanna try something new, then it's time to go to the next level, and a lot of times that can be really exciting and really fun. Some seated dumbbell shoulder presses next. Seated is nice, it takes your legs out of the equation so you don't really have to balance or stabilize as much. It takes a little bit more of the core out of the equation because now you have something to lean back on. So you can go a little bit heavier with these and that's nice. And what's really nice with dumbbells as well is that you can kind of choose the angle of the press. So instead of a typical overhead press of the barbell, maybe you are dealing with some shoulder, 
impingements or injuries or tightness or whatever it is, dumbbells can really help alleviate some of that because maybe you can do more of a neutral grip, you can bring your elbows in a little bit tighter, help open that shoulder joint up, make it a little bit more comfortable for the press, and that can be very important when maybe you are dealing with any kind of discomfort injuries. You can still find exercises that you can do that feel damn good. You may notice we're decked out in TLF gear today. Huge thanks to TLF. We loved their stuff before, so when we found out they wanted to work with us, we were super happy. If you want to wear some of your own, use our code TLF-BUFF in the description. 15% off. Tell them the buff dude sent you. Hell yeah. The goal was to see who could bulk to 250 pounds, and the goal was also to see who could get the biggest beard. Well, as you can see, we don't have beards anymore. That's because someone wanted to take over our channel again. And when they want to take over, we let them. <laughs> <laughs> and in the process, unfortunately, we had to do a little shaving. So until the technology gets good enough where we can keep our beards, the beards had to go. But hopefully there'll be a very enjoyable video coming out very soon that you should be looking out for. I'm not sad at all. Hot as shit here. That is true. That is true. I, uh, I had some, some worms in there, some birds. There's uh, you know, a lot of animals were taking up residence in, in there. You know how they sell alpaca, you know, fur for yarn? They do that for the buff dudes beards. We they, sold it. We did. Coats up. We did. Um, it was our beards and our pubes. <laughs> 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 Moving on to triceps with the cross bench dips. And if you have two benches in your body, well then you can give this one a shot. Range of motion is going to differ based upon your flexibility. So as you can see, we're doing a little butt touch. That kind of signifies signals for us that we have our full range of motion. We go back up to the top position, really lock out at the triceps and squeeze. But if you can't get your ass quite to the ground, no worries. The really important part is bring yourself back up to that top position to lock out with your triceps. And then over time, of course, with mobility, a little bit of flexibility, you can get the full range of motion as well. But excellent exercise. And of course, if you do want to go up and wait, all you got to do is throw some weights on your lap as you perform the exercise and you're good to go. We're moving on to our final exercise of this push routine, that being calf raises. You can't forget the calves. And when we started this series, the Bulk Brothers, that was one of the muscle groups which were lagging behind for me and for a lot of men, our calves. So can't forget to implement these in. That's what we're gonna be wrapping it up with. Thank you for watching the video and we'll see you next time. For our next workouts, I think what we're gonna be focusing on is an upper lower body split. Look for that soon. And until next time, stay buff.